raise your voice all over the world. Begin to raise your sound to the Lord. We praise you, we praise you. We've come to say thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning.
now. Say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Say, here's my worship. All of my worship.
good. You are faithful. You are merciful. You are kind. You are gracious. We remember who you are. We remember who you are. Faithful Father. Faithful friend. Keeper of our souls. Somebody lift your voice in this room. Let your memory begin to stir your praise. Let your memory begin to provoke a hallelujah from your lips. We remember, we remember. We remember, we remember. Saying that will not be shot and raise it out. Saying that it will.
On the mountain you'll get the glory. In the valley you will get the glory. Through my tears you will get the glory. You turn mourning into dancing. You turn sorrow into joy. You're the God who turns it around. Showing every season, no matter what we're facing, we remember who our God is. We remember that our God is greater. We remember that our God is stronger. We remember that our God is higher. We remember you. 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 Lord of breakthrough. Lord of breakthrough. Lord of breakthrough. Lord of breakthrough. We remember you. We remember you. Promise keeper. Promise keeper. Promise keeper. We remember. We remember. We remember. We're gonna worship. We're gonna worship you. You are greater than the trial. You're greater than the circumstance. You're greater.
we will continue our worship and our prayer throughout this time. I stand with the solemn responsibility of giving language to a season via exhortation that will lead us into our time of prayer and worship to continue and I want to read Ezra chapter 3, Ezra chapter 3. If you have your Bible, you can join me in Ezra chapter 3, starting with verse 1. I see you grabbing your phones, and so I'll give you a moment. You guys can keep going. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the language of this season. I thank you that you speak to us concerning what you've invited us into. Now, Father, I pray that you take us deeper, take us higher, open up our understanding, revelation, knowledge, and bring us into a place where we walk out what you've invited us into in the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 3, verse 1, in early autumn when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled in Jerusalem with a unified purpose. Then Jeshua, son of Jehoshadak, joined his fellow priests and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, with his family in rebuilding the altar of the God of Israel. They wanted to sacrifice burnt offerings on it as instructed in the law of Moses, the man of God. Even though the people were afraid of the local residents, they rebuilt the altar at its old site. Then they began to sacrifice burnt offerings on the altar to the Lord each morning and evening. They celebrated the Feast of Shelters as prescribed in the law, sacrificing the number of burnt offerings specified for each day of the festival. They also offered the regular burnt offerings and the offerings required for the new moon celebrations and the annual festivals as prescribed by the Lord. The people also gave voluntary offerings to the Lord. Fifteen days before the festival of shelters began, the priests had begun to sacrifice the burnt offerings to the Lord. This was even before they had started to lay the foundation of the Lord's temple. Those are the six verses that I'm going to read in this moment and give us a little bit of language of the season uh, that the Lord has invited us into, uh, both as a church, but also what he's inviting us into as a church to lead uh, in, the, in the coming days as well, which is why I'm speaking about season specifically, because as I said to you earlier, uh, as I said to you last month at this, at this time, God's not just giving us a rebrand, but it's an assignment uh, that he's inviting us into. It's not just a new name for our morning, but it's a specific thing that God spoke to us uh, concerning altars. And I want to, um, last month we dealt with the altar of incense, uh, but this particular uh, time, I want to deal with this particular passage of scripture to pull out just a, a number of things here, and then uh, we will combine that with our New Testament understanding uh, and then lead us into a time of prayer uh, and worship and offering ourselves to the Lord. And the, the context of, of this particular uh, passage finds itself as the exiles are returning uh, out of Babylonian exile and now uh, come back uh, home uh, to find home uh, as a place of chaos and a place of ruin from what they remember. And uh, if we remember on Sunday, we were kind of given this idea that, that chaos is just order waiting to be interpreted. Uh, so they here they, they come into this, this place of uh, chaos, um, this place where everything is out of order, and, and the first thing that they do uh, is uh, to make sure that they actually rebuild the altar. Now, this is a very important phrase here, or a very important word here, uh, because even as I was preparing my heart last night, and specifically this morning, uh, the Spirit of God uh, asked me a question um, that, that made me go back and make sure that I placed the emphasis in the right place. They did not just build an altar, they rebuilt one. This is, this is highly important for the season uh, that we are in uh, because specifically um, for those of us who need to understand what an altar is, uh, an altar, um, and, and it did not update on my notes on my here, so I will put it here. Sorry. Okay. The altar, the altar um, by definition, is a place of sacrifice. 
An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of covenant. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of worship. Uh, more specifically, a place of his presence. And the Old Testament offers altars were often, most often built uh, at sites of an encounter. Uh, typically, theophanies, uh, where people would have encounters with God. Uh, they would build altars or when he would reveal himself in a particular way. But in this particular passage of scripture, um, not only are they doing this, this altar as a place of sacrifice specifically, and we're going to talk about what the sacrifice is in just a moment. I'm not going to, I said this is the exhortation, not a teaching, uh, but we're going to talk about specifically what they uh, did at this altar specifically, uh, but I want to give us a New Testament emphasis here um, that an altar is also a place of emphasis or priority. It's a place of emphasis or priority. As it relates to where we are, um, and by the way, you can turn this down a little bit because I'm, I'm on the verge of feedback. Um, as it relates to where we are um, and, and as it relates to where they were uh, at, at this time in the book of Ezra, they were entering into a new season after coming out of an old season. They were coming out of Babylonian captivity, entering into the new season of now being free to return to God uh, to worship. And so what we see here specifically, uh, whenever you are entering into a new season, uh, that is also a time to make a new commitment to God. As a church, we are entering into a new season, whether we recognize it or not, and it's a time for us to make a new commitment to God. But in addition to making this new commitment to God, it's not just the building of an altar that we are doing, it is also the rebuilding of an altar or the re-emphasis or the re-priority of what matters to us. Before they built the temple, and the scripture says before they even built their homes, in other words, before they even added order to the chaos of their lives, what they were saying was the very first thing that we need to do is rebuild a specific altar or to place our emphasis to say to God, this is what we want most. Now, the Bible says to us in Ezra that what they wanted to do was to offer burnt offerings. Now, the reason why this is important is because while we spoke uh, last month on the altar of incense, this specific thing that they wanted to do was to to rebuild an altar in order to make burnt offerings. Burnt offerings was to represent the forgiveness of the sins of the people or offering the animal fully in order to have forgiveness of sin, which was to say that it represents their desire for nearness to God. They, they knew that they could not be near to God or close to God or in the presence of God without the burnt offering. And so the very first thing that they wanted to do when they came to this place was to say, God, we want to say to you that before we do anything else, before we establish anything else, before we ask for anything, before we come to you for anything, what we want the most is to be close to you. And I feel like um, um, the reason why the Lord specifically said to me this morning, did they build it or did they rebuild it? It's because we live in a generation that does not care that altars have been torn down. We live in a generation that does not give emphasis or priority uh, to the things of God. They just want God to accept whatever and to accept us however and to not say, God, we want to make sure that we say to you more than anything else that you alone are our priority. And so what the Spirit of God is inviting us into, because we are in a season, not only as a house, but in a season uh, around the world and in the nations of the earth, where the Spirit of God is literally inviting us to take a look at the things that we prioritize. Do we prioritize God? Do we prioritize the Spirit of God? Do we prioritize nearness to God? Do we prioritize His presence over anything else? Because we do have a generation that prioritizes a number of things except for his presence. Now, here's the thing. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, altars are not typically spoken of. It's an Old Testament word. But there is a reason for that. Um, when the New Testament speaks of altars, it's typically talking about or referring to the Old Testament. There's a reason for that family. The reason for that family is because there was an altar that God laid. There was an altar that God himself made. It was the cross of Christ. If the altar is a place of sacrifice, there was a place where an ultimate sacrifice was made. And according to Hebrews chapter 10, there was a sacrifice once and for all. And so because there was a sacrifice once and for all, then it wasn't the kind of thing where 
we are to come and bring burnt offerings over and over because the scripture says that the burnt offerings reminded people of their sin. But Christ, once and for all, has taken away all of our sins. And now the scripture tells us that the altar is in heaven, not on earth. So there was an altar that was made. But there is an implied altar in the scripture. There is an implied altar in the scripture. Many of us know it this way. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship or is your reasonable service, or as I said, spiritual act of worship. The implied altar is there, because if the altar itself, by definition, means a place of sacrifice, when Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves as a living living sacrifice, what he is saying is there is an implied altar in the spirit. There is an implied altar in your heart. There is something why? Because the altar was something that sat in the temple, but now in the new covenant we understand that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Which is to say that what God invites us to is an altar of priority or emphasis that we offer ourselves to God. Now here is the, here is the final thing and I, I you know I'm not trying to be deep or anything like that this morning I wanted to to give us an exhortation the, the spirit of God wanted us to see because I was going to take this whole thing to talk about how they rebuilt the altar at the old site and what the old site represented and everything else and how that was the altar that David built at the runner's threshing floor that became the site of the new temple so they rebuilt it and I was going to do all that kind of stuff but that was unnecessary for the simple point that the Lord wanted to make the simple point is this when the Spirit of God said, this is, you're coming to the altar. There was a number of understandings that he wanted us to have concerning the altar. But specifically for us this morning, last, last month it was the altar of incense. Specifically for us this morning is, will you make him your priority? Will you make him your priority? In Ezra chapter 3, what they were saying was, before we do anything else, before we rebuild the temple before we even rebuild our own homes. What we're saying is God, we can't do anything without you. And so therefore, they wanted to rebuild an altar that was torn down to say to the Lord, you are our priority. In this room, the question is, what is your priority? Is he your priority? And if he is your priority, and I do believe that he is, if you are here at 647 in the morning, if he is your priority, here is, here is the imperative according to Romans chapter 12. Offer yourself. Offer yourself. My entire exhortation this morning was to set up the idea of us offering ourselves as living sacrifices to God to say, you have us completely. You have us totally, and our emphasis is you, and you are our priority. And how do we say to God that he is our priority? We say to God that he is our priority by offering ourselves, which means every part of us, every part of our plans, every part of our future, every part of our resources, every part of our thoughts, every part of our day, every part of every part of us belongs to God. And that is how we say that he is our priority. And if there would be a people who would read build that altar, I guarantee you others would join you. What the Spirit of God is inviting us into as we come into a new season is to also say in this new season, our priority is the same. Are you hearing me? After coming out of 10 years of his presence, we are not coming into a new 10 years or a new 90 years by saying that there is a new priority. We are going to rebuild an altar in a generation who has said, we don't care. Our priority is money. Our priority is power. Our priority is influence. Our priority is being liked. Our priority is this. Our priority is that. God, for us, our priority is you. Our priority is your presence. We need you more than we need anything else. We want to be with you before we even build our own house. We want to be with you before we even try to build a church. We want to be with you. That is what we want. And if there are people in this room who say, God, this is what I want. You were singing right when you came in here. Here's my worship. I am the living sacrifice. All of my worship. You have it all. You have my life. You have my plans. You have my dream. I want you more than I want anything else. Would you lift up your hands in this room 
would you lift up your hands? Your voices were already raised to the Lord. Would you lift up your hands? And I encourage you in this moment, if there is something that we are going to begin to pray in this moment, is that we offer ourselves back to the Lord. That the implied altar, the spiritual altar that Paul speaks about, the spiritual altar that Paul speaks about, is that we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I belong to you. Would you begin to lift up your voice right here? Lord, I belong to you. Lord, my life belongs to you. Lord, my heart belongs to you. Lord, my praise belongs to you. Lord, my thoughts belong to you. Lord, my family belongs to you. Lord, everything I have belongs to you. Everything I have came from you. And so now it belongs to you. I offer it back to you. I don't hold on to it. You are my priority. You are my focus. You are the one that I want. You are the one that I long for. You are the one that I'm after. You are the one that I am positioned for. My desire is you. My heart belongs longing is you. My craving is you. My hunger is you. And so, Father, I offer myself to you. I give myself to you before I give myself to anything else. I belong to you. You are the one that made me. You are the one who created me. You are the one who knows my thoughts. You are the one who has spoken into my future. Every single thing that I do is because of you. Oh God, every step that I take is because you order it. Every breath that I take is because you gave it to me. And Lord, it's my response to your mercy is to offer myself to you. It is my response to your mercy to offer my life to you. I give you my worship. I give you my days. I give you my focus. I give you my attention. I give you my future. I give you the breath in my body. I give you my body itself. I belong to you. You are the one that I'm after. Would you offer yourself to the Lord? Would you offer yourself to the Lord? Would you say to him, you are first. You are my priority. You are the thing that I want. You are the one that I want more than I want anything else. More than I want anyone else. It is you that I want and I offer myself completely and totally to you. I do not hold back parts of my heart. I do not hold back parts of my life but I give it to you now I give it to you now I say oh God walk into every chamber of my heart walk into every chamber of my thoughts Father I pray that you take my past you take my present you take my future oh God even the parts of my heart that I've tried to hide from you that cannot be hidden because even to you darkness is light and so there is no place of my heart that can be hidden and so Father I give you my whole heart I give you my whole heart and I say that you are my priority. You are the one that I want for the rest of my days. You are the one that I want for the rest of my life. It was not a 10 year priority. It's a forever priority. I want your presence more than I want anything else. I want to be with you more than I want to be with anyone else. I need you more than I need anything else. And so God, I offer myself completely and totally to you. Father, I thank you that even in this moment, even for this church, Lord, we offer ourselves for you. This is the house that you created. This is the place of your habitation. And so, Father, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want to do, we continue to say this is a priority for this house. This is a priority for this people. We will be a people who will rebuild an altar of sacrifice to say that we want to be with you. We want to be with you. We have not determined that we can do anything without you. We cannot build without you. We cannot establish anything without you. We cannot do anything without you. We cannot lead anyone without you. We can't even pray without you. And so God, it is us saying, even as the people said in Ezra, before we do anything else, what we want more than anything else is your presence because we know that without your presence, without right standing with you, without intimacy with you, nothing else matters. And so Father, we thank you that you bring us into a place of intimacy. We thank you that you continue to bring us into a place of perpetual encounter. Father, we offer ourselves to you completely and totally. We offer ourselves to you completely and totally. Anybody else say, God, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I belong to you. You are. You are everything that I want. You are everything that I desire. You are everything that I need. In the altar that we realize within our 
our generation has been torn down. It's now rebuilt. We are rebuilding the altar that says we want to be with you. We are rebuilding the altar that says that we are willing to be a living sacrifice. We are rebuilding the altar that says before we need anything else, we need you. We are rebuilding the altar that says that your presence comes first. Your presence is priority. Your presence is everything. Your presence over everything else. We cannot build anything without you. We cannot do anything without you. It is you that we need. This is the altar that we rebuild in this moment. An altar that says, God, we need you more than we need anything else. You are our priority. your hands to the Lord one more time. That's right. There is a reality in the presence of God when we offer ourselves to God. There's always a part of us that we hold back. And it's the part of us that we're unaware of until the Holy Spirit shows us what we haven't given Him. Would you allow Him to search your heart now? In any area of your life or your heart that you have been holding on to, any area of, of your life or your heart, whether it be a fear of the unknown or whatever it may be, or a particular area that God's been inviting you to say, give this to me. Only the Holy Spirit can show you. Only the Holy Spirit can show you. When he is your priority, you give him every part of you. Would you let him show you now? Holy Spirit. We open up our heart to you now that you would reveal to us and show us the areas of our life that we have not given you priority, the areas of our life that we have not yielded completely to you. These are the areas now we put on the altar. The altar of sacrifice now. Show us, Holy Spirit. Show us, Holy Spirit. Show us, Holy Spirit.
know he's doing it because he just showed me something. If you would let him, he will. a place you haven't fully trusted him. Where's a place that you've been afraid to say, God, yes, whatever you want. about your own heart, but he does and he will show you. And when he shows you, offer that as a living sacrifice. Don't assume you know. He knows the inner recesses of our heart. He knows every thought. He knows every fear. He knows every worry. He knows the source of why you won't completely surrender. But when he shows you,
This is our final thing that we'll do in this moment. The rebuilding of the altar in Ezra's day was the restoration of proper worship after it had been taken away from them. It was a day that they had longed for to come to a place where they could worship the Lord again and be near to him. We began our time this morning in worship. We continued our time by offering ourselves to the Lord, which is also worship. Then we continued our time by asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the areas of our own life that we had been holding back, that had not been fully sacrificed. That is also worship. We are going to end our time in worship because he is our priority. Would you lift up your hands again? I know you got the chance to have them down for a moment. But this time as your hands are lifted, the band will raise their volume so that you can raise yours. As you begin to lift up your voice all over this room in worship, whether it be in song or whether it be in exaltation with the Lord, would you just take the next, not few seconds, would you take the next few minutes and worship and adore him? Would you lift up your voice all over this room? And if you're watching online, wherever you are, lift up your voice. You may think, what are we doing here? We're saying to God, there is a generation that is willing to rebuild the altar of worship. There is a generation that is willing to restore proper worship by first offering ourselves. Before we offer our words, we offer ourselves. Before we offer platitudes, we offer ourselves. Before we ask a question, we offer worship. Before we ask you to do anything, we offer, we offer worship. Before we try to build anything, we offer worship. We offer worship. Would you lift up your voice in this room? And if you're watching online around the world, lift up your voice wherever you are, if you're able to. And lift up your voice in worship. Some of you may sing a song. Some of you just may give words of adoration. But it's to say, God, you brought us to the altar of worship. You brought us to the altar of worship. You brought us to the altar of worship. Yes, we understand incense. But today is the burnt offering of worship. Today is the burnt offering of worship. It's us saying we want to be near to God. How are we near to God in the New Testament? By offering ourselves and also giving to him from the fruit of our lips, thanksgiving and praise unto God, who alone is worthy to be praised, who alone is worthy to be magnified, who alone is worthy to be exalted, who alone is worthy to be lifted. We give him this God, the only God who's worthy of worship, the only God who's worthy of worship, our spiritual altar. We lift up our heart to the Lord and we say, Lord, because of the sacrifice that you made that draws us near, we can enter into the throne, to the throne boldly. And now we thank you that because we can enter boldly, now we lift up our voice, we lift up our hands, we lift up our heart, we give our life and we give our worship to you and you alone. You alone deserve our worship. You alone are worthy to be praised. And so we give ourselves to you. No one can worship you for us. So we give you the worship that you alone are worthy of from the fruit of our lips.
but before you do it if he is your priority give him worship if he is your priority give him worship if he's what matters to you the most give him worship give him glory and give him honor because he's the one that matters the most he's the reason why we are here he's the reason why we came into this room he's the reason why we gather he's the reason why we rebuild this altar in a generation that wants everything but him we are a generation that says we want Jesus more than anything else we want to be with God more than anything else and our response to this is worship Say, Lord, you are my priority. 